Bella Ramsey may have never played the video game, but her role in the series The Last of Us did teach her how to swear with an American accent. You. And when it comes to shenanigans on the set of The Last of Us, that's only the beginning. For the car ride scene, production transformed the entire town of Fort McLeod into something that Pedro Pascal referred to as an extreme version of Halloween Horror Nights. The amazing thing about Fort McLeod is it was like you could just really immerse yourself because it's all in front of you. As Pedro recalled, the experience of driving through the set with a camera in the car while watching mobs of infected chasing people and cars almost hitting us as being the greatest opportunity of playing make-believe I've ever had. I learned the, that American accent by cursing, essentially. But she has a good excuse. The way Bella describes it, it was important to her to learn how to swear properly because Ellie curses every two seconds. She worked with a dialect coach and started out with some super complex but less vulgar sounding words like olive oil. And if you're wondering if that accent managed to stick at all, if, if I ever need to make a phone call that's like important, I do an American accent. How do you think you'd respond to seeing the clickers in person? The third stage of infection was represented by the show using practical effects, and you can even see the actors just sort of hanging out on set wearing the full costumes. And speaking to Pedro Pascal, Bella Ramsey said, You were very grossed out by them. I, I was grossed out. While she argued that, I found them sort of beautiful. They were beautiful. But in the end, the two of them agreed that the beauty of the clickers only like made them that much more terrifying. And they described them as the kind of like monstrous floral nightmare. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, Bella Ramsey nearly turned down the role of Ellie. Crazy, right? But the way she described it, I seriously considered that maybe I don't want to be famous, so I'm not going to do this show because it's going to propel me to a place I don't want to go in terms of being seen and being known. I like to blend in and hide. Still, out of everyone who had auditioned, including her Game of Thrones co-star Maisie Williams, Bella was easily Neil Druckmann's favorite, and he described her by saying, Bella felt so real. It was like Ellie real in live action. It didn't feel like watching an actor. Did you know Pedro Pascal has never even played the games before? He said that he sought out the role of Joel after watching Craig Mazin's Chernobyl, which left him feeling that I would have, I don't know, murdered somebody to work with Craig. And so on the day of his audition, Pedro called his sister to tell her about this new job opportunity. And when her teenage sons overheard, they were like, the last of us, you have to do it. You better get this job. From this response, and so I understood very, very quickly what was uh, what was what was at stake. From the moment you meet Sarah, it's important for you to love her. She's almost the protagonist until disaster strikes. While the game is able to form a bond between you and Sarah by making her a playable character, the series didn't really have that option. So to make up for that, Craig Mazin came up with the idea of having the first episode open on her perspective, which like allows for you to spend more moments with her alone. And so this also had the unexpected benefit of allowing the series to ask the question, if an outbreak like this happened, what would it look like from a kid's perspective? Merle Dandridge has already made herself synonymous with The Last of Us after providing the voice for Marlene on the games, but for the show, she's stepped up to play her in live action. It's another thing to step in front of the camera and embody her with my own instrument. Merle even admitted that she didn't think she'd get the part, but from the moment she heard the show was happening, she knew one thing, mommy want that. So when Bella showed up for her first audition, the producers asked if she'd ever played The Last of Us games, to which she responded with something like, Have you played this video game? No, I'm not a gamer. And their response? Keep it that way. Huh. Bella did break the rules a little bit and watched some of the gameplay, but explained they didn't want me to copy Ashley Johnson's iconic version of Ellie, but bring a fresh perspective, I suppose. So how many locations can you recognize from the game? Photo sets uploaded onto the Last of Us News Twitter page show just how much painstaking detail went into building these sets. From the eerie sign welcoming you into Boston QZ to the guard towers that look just like something from the game, 
Craig Mason found that to be one of the most important elements from it to include several Easter eggs for fans of the games. But he also established the rule that nothing could be included if it wouldn't make sense to casual viewers. It wasn't so much duplicating as, as honoring. It was like, well, why would we change it if it is lovely? Who knew we almost missed our chance to see Pedro Pascal in the role of Joel? As it turns out, he had to get permission from the producers of The Mandalorian in order to even work on a rival company's project. He said that the producers very generously gave him permission, but that wasn't the only reason why The Mandalorian might have worked against him being cast. Craig Mazin admitted that he was a little bit hesitant to hire Pedro due to certain similarities between Joel and Pedro's character on The Mandalorian, such as the dynamic he shares with Baby Yoda. In the end, Mazin decided that the two relationships would still come across as different enough, due to the fact that interacting with a teenager is complicated. Don't. <clears throat> Do the clickers on the show sound familiar to you? That might be because they're voiced by the same team who brought us the clicker's distinctive sound for the games. Misty Lee is a voice actress who provided many of the sounds herself, while Philip Kovats served as the audio director during the game's development. For the HBO series, Misty Lee is credited for playing the female clicker, while Philip Kovats provides the voice for male clicker. Having summarized his experience on Twitter by saying, Misty and I had an absolute blast working with Neil Druckmann and Craig Mazin, reprising these characters and helping them come alive. Okay, well, we all know that you can't do The Last of Us without Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson. Although, the voice actors who brought Joel and Deli from the games will not be reprising their iconic roles on the series, Craig Mazin has promised each of them other roles in the series. And honestly, Troy admitted that he didn't really expect to play Joel in the live action anyway, and said that they were gonna see the aesthetics of me and it was just gonna be so different. And both he and Ashley have given Pedro and Bella their blessings. We, we just love you as Joel and Ellie. Thank you. Woo! You may recognize Pedro and Bella as their Game of Thrones characters. So we come from the same home. Birthing place. Yeah. As much as this definitely made it easier for the two of them to navigate their working relationship, it's, it is sort of a, a, a bond that we have. That doesn't mean that things were all sunshine and roses. Pedro can still recall the time that he first got in contact with Bella Ramsey and found himself thinking, how am I going to text a 17 year old? Okay, but like for all of their attention to detail, how well do you think the HBO series did in recreating the characters and visuals from the game? We'd love to hear your thoughts, so don't forget to make them heard down below.